I have been itching to get to redrawing this illustration. Back in May of 2020, I did a lovely watercolor sketch, you can see on the left here, and I almost immediately redrew it in my concept sketchbook in November of 2020. I redid the trees, made it look all sorts of spiffy, but it was definitely missing something. If I'm going to redraw it, I had to have a bigger scene. So instead of just the background, I added a midground and a foreground and got to work redrawing it on my watercolor paper. Now with the sketch all complete, I can get right into inking. Inking by far has to be one of the quickest processes of making my illustrations. I did try to do something a little different where in the foreground I have black ink. I used my phthalo green micron to do the midground and a more like cyan -y kind of blue for my background. I wanted to see how this would affect the final illustration and to generally see if I liked that kind of line work or not. The original watercolor sketch used quinacridone rose with a little bit of violet iron oxide and a phthalo green mixture uh, mixed with lemon yellow and a little bit of white. I wanted to kind of keep with this color scheme, but because the original sketch was technically only two colors, I decided to add in a yellow to add a wider mixing range. I also did two color tests. I did one with a phthalo green without added white, and then the original uh, color scheme with the phthalo and white. I almost always do these color tests after I finish the line art, so I have time to think about the colors I'm using. In this case, I ended up going with the original combination of quinacridone, the phthalo green white mixture, and a lemon yellow, though I'm very happy I decided to test the unwhitened phthalo green. You'll be able to see why later on in this video. With almost every single illustration I've done, I've always started with a wet on wet layer first to establish my base colors. I put colors where I kind of want them to be and it helps me figure out what I do next. Afterwards, I go in with a much more saturated color and start filling in large chunks of the painting. I still like to use a lot of water and let the watercolor kind of do what it wants. For these trees, I did add a little bit of the violet iron oxide to my quinacridone rose because I wanted that granulating texture that the violet iron oxide gives. I really love how these two colors look side by side. It definitely gives the whole illustration a much more magical feel. When it comes to coloring characters, I will always revert back to using their chosen palette colors instead of mixing it from the triad that I've chosen. Gretchen here uses phthalo green blue shade, which I think really suits her. One of the more challenging aspects of redoing this illustration was figuring out how to incorporate the newly introduced lemon yellow. I was able to make some lovely grass tones and shades and it actually mixed a really lovely orange that I used on these flowery type things in the foreground. I also tried to incorporate more violet iron oxide in my grasses and foreground because it gives quite a good like gravelly texture and that's something I want to incorporate in more of my illustrations. A lot of the times people can leave their watercolor illustrations undersaturated, so I always like to go back in and make sure I'm adding more layers to really make sure my colors are bright and saturated. It really adds a layer of depth when you do this. And speaking about depth, that phthalo green without the white mixed into it comes in handy at this point. A lot of the times I don't mix my colors dark enough and I don't add enough dark spots to my illustrations. So I used my pure phthalo green to add a whole bunch of shadowy, shady areas to my illustration, which really helps my characters in the foreground stand out against the bright and sunny background. 
I like to add little flowers in the foreground as a sort of finishing detail for my illustrations. It makes my world seem a little more alive and a little more vibrant. I couldn't be happier with how this illustration turned out, and I'm happy I decided to take the concept illustration and expand on it the way I did. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you next time.